Hello children, we will start the ninth paragraph of the lesson, the gift of Magi. Okay. So, ninth paragraph already uh, we have seen that it says that Jim and Della both they have their precious possessions with them. What are those? So, for Jim it was a gold watch that had been his father's and also his grandfather's. And for Della what was that? Her long hair, lengthy hair was there, no? That. So, even both possessions have been compared to King Solomon's treasures and also the her hair that is Della's hair has been compared to Queen of Sheba. Okay? So, like that the writer has compared the two possessions of Jim and Della. That what we have seen in ninth paragraph. Right? Next, let us go to the tenth paragraph. So, as Della was thinking to buy a beautiful gift, a precious gift for her husband Jim, so she, she has decided to sell her hair, lengthy hair, so that she can get money. Because till then she, ha she could able to save certain money, how much? Only $1.87 she could save. But that much money is not enough to buy a present for her husband Jim. Right? That is why she was worried. So now, amazingly, she got an idea to sell her hair so that she can get little money, some more money, and they can she can buy a breast gift for her husband on Christmas Eve. That was her decision. Okay. Uh, so, she pulled her hair long, lengthy hair down and it was like a see here how they are comparing like a cascade of brown waters. It means that her hair also so beautiful and brownish hair. You know right foreigners hair how it will be brown, right little brownish will be there. So, that was so beautiful and it was a lengthy hair and it was almost reaching her knees, okay that much hair she had. And immediately she wanted to go out in order to sell her hair. So, um, on went her old brown jacket. She, wear, she was wearing some uh, jacket over her and went her old brown hat also. She put brown hat and with the whirl of skirts and with the brilliant sparkle still in her eyes. She fluttered out of the door and down the stairs to the street. So, she went to the street down streets and she was living in the another floor right. So, she need to get down. So, along with the steps she came out down so that she can reach a street. So, there she went to the street. After that let us turn the page and it is 12th paragraph. Okay. So, we have seen here. Could able to see the 12th paragraph. See what it says. So, she went where she could, where she stopped the sign read, Mum sovereign, hair goods of all kinds. One flight of Della ran and collected herself, panting, Madam, large to white chili, hardly looked at sovereign. So, she began to talk with the, the shopkeeper. The shopkeeper name is sovereign. Madam Sovereign. So, she began to do the conversation with her and she asked Della. What she asked? Will you buy my hair? Ask Della. Will you buy my hair? Then, then immediately what is the response of uh, the shopkeeper? I buy hair, said Madam. Take her hat. Underline this statement. This is for ref, uh, extract. They will give. They take her hat off and let us have a sight at the looks of it. Okay, she wanted to see how much hair that she has. So, she, ha she asked her to remove the hat. Who asked? The shopkeeper asked Della to remove her hair. Why? In order to see her hair. How much hair is there? So, that, that much money she can put it for that. Then she removed the cap and how the hay, the down ripple, the brown casket. Twenty dollars, said madam, lifting the mask with a practiced hand. She took her uh, instrument so that she can cut her hair. 
So after that she could the she could give the amount also. How much amount she put? Twenty dollars. Who said? Madam said. Who is that madam? Shopkeeper, sovereign. Her name is sovereign. So she has given twenty dollars for that. Then Della asked after giving the after telling the money how much money that she can give twenty dollars immediately. Della is asking, give it to me quick. This is also for extract. Underline this. Give it to me quick and also take her hat off. Let's have a sight. Okay, who said this? Shopkeeper said and give it to me quick. Said Della said. Oh, and the next two hours tripped by on rosy wings. Forget the hatched metaphor. She was ransacking the stores for Jim's present. She has forgotten everything that she lost her hair. Everything she has forgotten, and she be she was running towards the shops wherever she can find the good, the best gift for her husband, Jim's. Okay, she went shop this shop that shop. She began to search. In order to find the best gift to her husband, then at last, what happens? See, nineteenth paragraph. She found it at last. It it surely had been made for Jim and no one else. Oh, after seeing the gift, after selecting the gift, she is telling that. So that is the very that gift is only meant for her husband, Jim. Not for anyone else. That's what she has given. And there was no other like it. In any of the stores, so at last she found the best gift, and she had decided that is the best gift, and she couldn't find that much good gift in the any other shop. As she had turned all of them inside out, it was a underline that what is the gift? It was a platinum fob chain, simple and chaste in design, properly proclaiming its value by substance or alone, and not. By meritorious ornamentation, as all good things should do. Okay, so he, she is describing the platinum fob chain. So what she wanted to give that is the chain for what? For Jim's watch. Jim had a precious possession, right? What was that watch? I told that that is the gift. That is the watch possession. For whom, Jim? Now she wanted to buy the chain for the watch. We'll put no for the chair. What type of chain it is? Not a gold, but it is platinum. Platinum fob chain, very good chain. She has selected, and it is simple and chaste, very beautiful. She is describing it is very simple and beautiful, and it's also it is worth. It has that worth, and also she wanted to give. And he's selling that it was even worthy of the watch. Okay, Wa watch is very good, and we have to put the equal worth thing right for the chain. So she has selected, and she is comparing to her to the watch. Okay, if I put this this chain to that watch, whether it is suitable for that watch or not. If watch is very costly, and if you are putting the stripe, that is the chain is very less cost, then how it could be? It looks odd. That's what she is thinking. Whether this fob chain is suitable for the watch or not. So and at last she had decided that that is the best platinum fob chain for Jim's watch. Okay, then. As soon as she saw it, she knew that it must be Jim's. It was like him. How it is? It was like him. How? Can you imagine? She is comparing the watch chain to Jim. How it is possible? It means that. So let us see how it is possible. Quietness and value. The description applied to both. So, as she said that it is quiet. How the characters? So she is comparing the characteristics of Jim to the watch description. Okay, as she said, chain is simple, right? So she even her husband also so quiet. That's why she is comparing. And the description applied to both twenty one dollars. So what is the cost of the platinum fob chain? Underline twenty one dollars. How much money that she had? 
first she had $1.87 but after selling her own hair how much dollar she got $20 so both if you add how much amount we get $21.87 now she is telling the cost of the fob chain is $21 and how much amount she would be 87 uh, cents she has now right because she paid the 21 dollars so with the chain on his watch Jim might be properly anxious about the time in any company grand as the watch was he sometimes looked at it on the sly on an account of the old leather strap that he used in the place of a chain Okay, she is a little bit imagining how would have Jim with the old leather strap. The strap was old, right? But the watch is so beautiful and it was looking little bit grand. So, it both are looking odd. That's what she is explaining here. So, now if she has given this for platinum fob chain as a gift, then it will be very good. Till then how Jim was looking the watch in order to see the time so secretly because her because Jim's watch uh, stripe was the leather stripe was there it was not good it was old watch was so good grand but the stripe was so bad so odd it was looking so old also so how he was looking at the watch in order to see the sign so secretly that's what he said sly on the sly on account of the old leather strap but now if you replace the old leather strap with the platinum fob chain how jim will be jim's watch will be so look so good right that's what she is describing and she is thinking of about the watch and Jim's position then 28th para let us see when Della reached home her intoxication gave way a little to prudence and reason she got out for curling curling irons and lighted the glass And lighted the gas and went to work repairing the ravages made by generosity added to love which is always a tremendous task dear friends a mammoth task now she be, she took the instrument in order to cover her hair because she before she used to have lengthy hair so beautiful hair but now she has cut her hair now, in order to cover her head properly, what she, was do, what she was doing, she began to curl her hair by using the instrument. Curling irons means she has to take in some instrument so that she can curl her hair in order to cover her head properly and also to show more beautiful than earlier. So that Jim will not notice her uh, her last of hair that's what then she did it it was a ma'am means very big task anyhow she has done within 40 minutes her ha her head was covered with the tiny clothes lying curls that made her look wonderfully like a trant school boy how she began to look she was looking like a trant school boy because she lost her hair right now it is like a crop that much only then she looked at her reflection in the mirror long, carefully and critically. She began to look how I was, how she was looking. Okay, she was, uh, then after that, if Jim doesn't kill me, she was getting so many doubts. Because she lost her, she was thinking that she, as she lost her hair, she has cut her hair, she may not look beautiful as earlier. That's why she was thinking whether Jim will love her or not. That's what she is. See, she is getting so many doubts. See here, if Jim doesn't kill me, she said to herself, before he takes a second look at me, he all he will say, I look like a Coney Island chorus girl. But what could I do? Oh, what could I do with a dollar and 87 cents? Okay, whatever it may be. Whatever he want to say, he may, he, he may say this, like a, I'm looking like Kali Island chorus girl. But what can I do? 
I have only one dollar eighty seven cents, and I am desired to purchase a best gift to my husband. I can't do anything. So she was menacing, and she is making her own conversation like that. Then the next, exactly at seven o'clock, her husband came. See here, twenty third paragraph. Uh, at seven o'clock, the coffee time. It was coffee was made, and the frying pan was on the back of stove, hot and ready to cook the chops. So she began to do her kitchen work, cooking work. She started seven o'clock. Jim was never late. Jim, Jim will never come late. Okay, Della doubled the fob chain in her hand and sat on the corner of the table near the door that he always entered. She was sitting near to the door, and she is waiting for her husband. And she knew very well that her husband will not come late. Then she heard his step on the stair away down on the first flight, and she turned white for just a moment. She had a habit of saying little silent prayers about the simplest everyday things, and now she whispered, "Please God, make him think I am still pretty." Okay, she began to pray to God. Okay, God, please make my husband to feel good about me. Still, I am looking beautiful. Though I lost the hair, still I need to look. Beautiful to my husband. In the sight of husband, I need to. I should look good. So she began to pray like that. 